Hello class, once again, good afternoon. Welcome to our session two of our series of webinars entitled Tourism Promotion. But we will focus more on promote tourism products and services. So once again, this is your uh, speaker in this afternoon, Mr. Jason uh, McCannon. So the session two is talks about uh, develop tourism market knowledge. So in our previous session, we talked about how to develop tourism product and services knowledge. So we discussed in the previous session, um, what are the ways, strategies to gain a lot of information in terms of tourism products and services and how it is important as a tourism staff. So in this session, we will talk about how to develop tourism market knowledge. So we have seven learning objectives of this session. So at the end of the session, you should be able to explain the concept of target markets, define the concept of niche markets, describe how promotions and offers may vary to suit differing target markets, identify sources of information about enterprise-specific target markets, also to describe the demographic characteristics of enterprise target markets, initiate action to identify changes in customer preferences, needs, wants, and expectations, and lastly, explain the benefits of using target markets with an organization. So to start with, we will talk about the benefits of identifying um, target markets but before we will talk about this um, specific topic uh, markets can be segmented or broken down according to their buyers similar needs characteristics or buyer behavior so from there uh, your organization develops profile or ways of describing market segments one or more of these segments can be selected as target market Finally, a competitive positioning is set for the product and appropriate market mix is decided, which is details strategy. So as uh, hoteliers or working in a tourism industry, uh, we need to identify our target markets. Who are the clients who will has a plan to purchase or to buy our products and services? That is why we need to determine who are those um, people and by doing that we can easily focus on to provide their specific needs and wants. Um, all organizations break down the entire possible market into groups by desirable prospective clients or target markets. So we need to focus on the certain groups so that we can uh, give our best in providing their needs and wants, especially their um, demands. So the benefits of using target markets are the following. Being better able to meet identify need. It also increase faster and more profitable sales and also more satisfied customers. Ability to become established as a specialist organization for nominated tourism products and services. It also enhances level for repeat and referral business from satisfied niche market customers. Also, being able to uh, get to know the target market better as the level of interaction with, uh, with them. Okay? And also, it reduces the likelihood of competitors entering into the marketplace. So, these are the following benefits if we will have a target market. So let's proceed in collecting information about the target markets. What are the ways or strategies on how to collect the information about the target markets? First is internal um, historic records such as bookings and sales records, customer purchase, histories, and customer database. That is why when there is a customers or tourists who will visit in our establishment, we need to collect the information. 
So those information is very important to analyze and interpret for the um, possible enhancement of the products and services. Also, we can collect information of our target market through customer market research. So in a tourist establishment, they will assign someone who is expert on research and they will conduct a customer market research. By doing that, we can easily identify who are the customers or the possible target markets to purchase or to buy their products and services. Also, information from support businesses such as suppliers, providers, carriers, agents, associates, head office, and industry peak bodies. And lastly, customer feedback which is uh, we can also have a paper base or electronic online and you can also get an information from a verbal feedback and also customer complaints and comments so as you have noticed uh, the business owner of a certain establishment uh, really emphasize the importance of collecting the data and information coming from the customers or from the clients so they, they collect all the data so that they can analyze it interpret and they will have a baseline for their improvements customers can be described by many different dimensions so there are different kinds of dimensions that we need to consider number one is psychographic dimensions what are the examples of psychographic dimensions uh, example for that is socioeconomic, also the status. So what are examples of status? Um, education, income, and occupation levels are combined to indicate status. Also the values, attitudes. What are the visible achievements? Some better. Um, other one is young optimist. There are socially aware. Okay. And also the lifestyle groupings a fair deal basic needs real conservation uh, conservatism traditional family life and conventional family life also the personality is either the person or the tourist is extrovert compulsive authoritarian or ambitious okay we also have uh, another segment of possible uh, target markets which is behavioral dimensions uh, we can base the behavioral dimensions through the needs. Example is economic. Um, I think you are already informed that the company in the Philippines is uh, different from the company in America. Though they have a same company, but they have different strategies in selling their products. For example, here in the Philippines, uh, shampoo you can observe that there's a lot of sachet okay but in america or outside the philippines they will have a bottles they don't have a sachet or if they have a sachet there are only limited why is that in philippines there are sachet lots of sachet and in the uh, outside of the philippines they will use bottles it's because of economic status because the uh, filipino people cannot able to purchase or buy a shampoo in the bottle you only purchase a little amount of um, sachet little amount of money that they can expense okay also there is a geographic dimensions the examples of the uh, geographic dimensions are region of the world region in country and size of city we also have uh, the demographic dimensions what are the examples of demographic uh, dimensions? It includes the income, the sex, the age, uh, family size, it's either 1 to 10 or more, family life cycle, it's either young, single, married, or no children, or divorce. We also have a occupation. It's either our target market is professional, technical, managerial, or trades. And also there's a dimension in the uh, demographic um, it includes education. Is it high school, tertiary, or university graduate? Okay. For example, in a business of 
school supplies. Uh, there are companies who create a products that is intended only for preschool and elementary levels. But there are some uh, companies of uh, school supplies who create a special uh, products and any school supplies that is intended for the high school level or the college level. So I have, uh, you can notice that they have the same products but there's a different target markets. There are different segmentation of the customers. Also the nationality and social class. Okay. So what are the examples of target market um, segments? There are uh, business. So what are examples of uh, business? The if IT. Uh, what's the meaning of if IT? It's a free independent traveler who arranges their own accommodations. There are also members of a corporation in which has a special rate with an organization and also conference or event guests within a hotel. Another uh, example of target market segment is leisure. Um, it's either a FIT, as I've mentioned earlier, a free independent traveler who arranges their own accommodation. Uh, tours or honeymooners, uh, families or elderly. Also religious. This market is traveling to participate in pilgrimage or religious celebration. Also we have sporting. This market is traveling to participate in sporting events, tours or competitions. So there are uh, different kinds of target markets who have a different um, goals in traveling. Also, we have outbound and inbound tourists. What do you mean by outbound tourists? Is where a local tourist goes to a region away from where they reside and where the business is. So this normally means that the tourist is either leaving the town, city, or the country. And on the other hand, the meaning of inbound tourist is where a tourist from other location comes into your region. So this normally means that the tourist is coming into your area. We also have domestic tourists. A tourist who travels within a country, they are locals and can easily be promoted. Okay? For example, a Filipino who will travel, a Boholana will travel to Manila. Okay? And in, we also have international tourists. A tourist who travels to or from another country conducting promotional activities can be more challenging as they may come from various countries, speak different languages, and have different needs. So, for example, an American who will visit Philippines and enjoy the different uh, tourist attractions here in the Philippines. And one of the barriers is the different uh, languages. So, that is why as a H RST or HM student, we need to practice to communicate using English language because a majority of our clients are coming from other countries. So there are also activities associated with identifying target markets. As you have observed, we are in session two, we are focusing more on how to identify the target markets. In session one, we focus more on how to develop or how to enhance our knowledge in pro tourism products and services. So the different activities that a tourism organization may undertake when determining their desired target markets includes identifying target markets used by the host enterprise, also identifying points of differentiation between established target markets, also describing why the established target markets were chosen, and explaining how the host enterprise tailors its tourism products or services to meet the identified needs of each target markets and identifying relevant tourism products or services as they apply to each of the host enterprises designated target markets. And lastly, analyzing market research used as the basis for target market development. Again, the research is really important in a business. If a business doesn't have a research activity, 
they don't have an idea how to develop or how to enhance their products and services that they provide to their clients. Now let's proceed to our learning objectives number two. Define the concept of niche market. Um, in the previous section, we look at identifying possible target markets, markets in which you may wish to focus uh, your sales efforts towards when selling tourism products and services. So in this session, in learning objectives number two, we will look at the concept of niche market, which looks at identifying smaller, more precise target markets. As we have mentioned earlier, uh, market segmentations is uh, by groupings, uh, different kinds of groups of customers or tourists or guests. In the niche market, it creates more smaller and precise target markets to focus more on the needs and wants of the target markets. So how to identify niche market? There are different groups. There are two groups of niche market. As mentioned before, the aim of niche marketing is to select one to three specific market segments in which you will focus your marketing and operational focus towards. So the example of two niche markets of a travel agency could be, there are two groups. Group one would be the corporate traveler and the other one is the high-end leisure traveler. So let's uh, discuss first about the group one, the corporate traveler. They have the characteristics. They have the age 30 to 60. So the tourist who has the age bracket from 30 to 60 has a busy lifestyle. They only have a middle income to high income. And they have a budget restrictions. Okay. Um, according to their wants and needs, they, need, uh, they want a convenience essential services such as transport and accommodation. As the frequency or loyalty to a specific uh, tourism sites, they want to have one to two times a month. Okay. Uh, there's a big difference between the corporate traveler and the high-end leisure traveler. Okay. So now let's proceed to group two, the high-end the high-end leisure traveler. So in terms of characteristics, they have the age bracket of 40 to 75. In the corporate traveler, in the group one, uh, they have only 30 to 60 years old. But in the high-end leisure traveler, they have age 40 to 75. And usually they are married and disposable income. They are well-educated and they only have limited time restrictions, uh, middle management, and well-presented. In terms of their wants and needs, they also have a convenience and seeking experiences. Okay? And about the frequency and loyalty, in the group one, they only have one to two times a month. But in the high-end leisure traveler, they have one to two times a year. Okay? Uh, now, let's proceed to our learning objectives number 2.3 describing how promotions and offers may vary to suit differing target markets okay now that you have identified a number of niche market in which to focus your promotional activities um, it's now time to develop a promotional strategy which will hope to meet the objectives of the organization so they will focus on review marketing objectives identifying key performance indicators you also understand methods to reach intended audience, identifying the marketing mix, select promotional methods, and reviewing or analyzing and monitoring promotional activities. So let's proceed to the types of KPI. Did you know what is the meaning of a KPI? It means, yes, key performance indicators. Identifying a small number of key performance indicators that can be regularly monitored is an important first step. So they provide an early warning system showing progress or lack of it. 
So being able to um, graphically represent them is also helpful since the result can be displayed for colleagues and staff to see at a glance. So the KPIs need to be directly linked to your marketing objectives. You will have to determine what's most suitable to your business. So these are the examples of KPI that we need to consider. Total number of goals made. We can identify the performance of our establishment through the number of goals being made. Also, we can determine if what particular month our tourist destination has a high salary or high profit through the collecting of the information, the total number of calls being made or total number of guests who check in in our particular hotel. Also, total number of new customers. So, for example, in a specific hotel or resort, in the front office, they will register the names of the guests and they will have a system that they can automatically determine if that particular customer is a repeat guest or they are a new guest. So, they can also identify the new customers so that they can know the a level of their performance of their business. Also, the number of leads increase in sales. It's either the business is increasing or decreasing. New sales per niche market and also marketing expense per customer. And lastly, marketing expense and sales revenue per customer from a specific campaign. So as you have noticed, uh, the reality of a business, especially in hospitality and tourism industry, they must determine or they must collect the information or the data that is very important so that you will have a concrete um, evidence or baseline on their plan to improve their products and services that they provide. So now let's proceed to identifying the market mi uh, marketing mix. I know that you have a subject before about the marketing and you are already uh, know this marketing mix. So we will just uh, review about this uh, marketing mix. The marketing mix refers to the set of actions or tactics that a company uses to promote its brand or product in the market. So if our products and services, if we will not promote our products and services, the the bottom line of this or the end of this uh, situation, if we will not promote our products and services, we will decrease our profits and our competitors will become more powerful in the marketplace uh, compared to our products and services. So there are seven elements, there are seven P's. Number one is product. The products uh, and services that are offered to the target market by the company. We need to consider what is the specific products or services that offered to our target market. Again, there are two kinds of products, the tangible and intangible product. The tangible products, the products that we can touch, we can smell, and the other in products which is intangible, that is, example is, services that you cannot able to touch or see you can also uh, you can only experience it we also need to consider the price of our product it refers to the amount of money that customers suppliers or intermediaries have to pay to buy the product we need to um, analyze the price of our product because if we will um, increase the price of our products, the tendency our customer will not buy to our products and services. Instead, they will go to our competitors. On the other hand, if we will also uh, decrease our price of our products, the tendency our customer will uh, have a doubt if our products and services has a good quality or not. That is why we, sh we should also consider to analyze the right pricing of our product. Also, placement. It involves how the company gets the products to the final customer or to the end user. 
Also, it is important to have a promotion. It covers the firm's communication activities to its target customers by way of advertising, promotion, personal selling, sales promotion, direct mail, public relation, and publicity. So, after we have a products and determine the price, and we have a placement to the end user, we need also to promote our product and services to increase the sales okay, of our business, especially in tourism industry. Also, we need to consider the people. It refers to the people who are involved in service delivery. This is particularly important where service uh, predominate and there is a high level of intangibility. Here, the building of customer relationship over time is critical. We need to consider the people who are working on creating the products and services. They will, we will train them, we will um, provide them an enough knowledge to enhance our products and services. Also, we need to consider the processes. These are the important where the customer is involved in a consumption process. Okay? So this is highlighted in the tourism industry where if the customer is treated poorly or receives poor service, they are likely to migrate to a competitor's no matter what facilities or products are offered as the customer will perceive these processes as poor value for money. Most especially in the area of services, for example, in a restaurant, if our waiters are not knowledgeable or are not skillful enough in delivering the services, for example, in, um, if he or she will serve the food and the customer will ask some questions, and if our, cost, uh, I mean, our waiters cannot able to answer the queries of our customers and he or she will not smile or he has a poor uh, public relation, the tendency our customer will be dissatisfied. No matter how our facilities is good and the place or the hotels, the environment, but our staff is not uh, really good, the tendency is they are or they will be dissatisfied and they will not return to your establishment. So it is important in the processing area that we need also to consider. And lastly, the physical evidence. It will be analyzed by the customer in order to assess the value of service. Okay, so these are the seven marketing mix. Now let's proceed. We will jump into learning objectives 2.6. It talks about um, initiate action to identify changes in customer preferences, needs, wants, and expectations. Okay. So for the introduction of these uh, learning objectives, uh, there are strong economic uh, growth markets. We also have ease of travel and large population base. And we also have here uh, greater demand for localized travel and cheap package and transport options and cheaper products and services within Asia countries. So in this section, we have identified the different types of target markets, possible niche markets, and designed promotional strategies to try to persuade them to purchase products and services to meet their needs. Like in any organization, it is important to monitor the needs of niche market on a regular basis as their needs are constantly changing. So the needs and wants of our tourists is or has a constant change. That is why we need to regular monitor their needs and wants. That is why we need to have always a customer feedback so that we can know their needs and wants as soon as possible. Okay. Also, let's proceed to, oh no, this is the last um, learning objectives of uh, session two. I hope that you have learned in this session. We only have a short uh, discussion and lesson uh, session two up to session five. Only the session one has a uh, long discussion. Again, for the summary, the session one talks about the 
to develop the tourism market knowledge. We can develop our knowledge to the tourism market, especially on collecting information data that is relevant to have a, a baseline for our future um, development of our products and services. Okay? Thank you for listening and hope to see you on our next session, session 3 on March 26, that is Friday. We will start at 8 a.m. and we will discuss about identifying individual customer needs. Okay, thank you for your time and don't forget to have an attendance and answer the questions of our attendance. Again, you only have one um, attempt to answer the questions. Please uh, answer it carefully. Thank you.